Well, we discovered there was another radio, which wasn't really a transistor radio. It's an integrated circuit radio. It's an alarm clock with an LCD display FM radio with a stereo output to headphone or monitor to the internal speaker, by the looks of it. And it's all based around one clever chip. Looking at it, and whether or not it does AM and FM, I really don't know because I can't read Chinese. So, we'll just zoom in and... Mr. Chippy, if you'd like to move the radio to the left slightly. There we go. And if you tilt it towards the camera. Oh, yes, that looks exciting. Oh, yes, so it receives 74 to 108. And, oops. There we are. So, we're going to find out. So, Mr. Chippy, if you'd like to open up the box... This Chinese sticky tape seems to be stronger than ours. Now some of these you have to fit the LCD and some of them it comes fitted. Fit. It's fitted on this. Oh well, that's, uh, oh, that's handy, isn't it? Hmm. Circuit box. Is it fiberglass on this in this occasion? I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's better, isn't it? These are about twelve pounds. It's astronomic, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Baggy bits. I wonder how many capacitors will be out of tolerance. Well, maybe more. You left a resistor behind it or something, did you, in that bag? Yes. Two. Oh. There we go. Good. We can throw the bag away. Right, well, we'll put a few parts in and we'll see what happens. So we'll rejoin the video in a little bit. Right, so we've... Uh, well, Mr Chippy's been fitting some resistors onto this radio. And uh, we've got a few left over as well. And they've all been intolerant and they're quite nice quality. The printer circuit board's fibreglass. In fact, both the printer circuit boards are fibreglass. Well, I'll just zoom in on that. And then, if you'd like to move the um, display board to the left, um, please, and then we can discuss these dome switches. We we'll had to fit the five dome switches, and they are done by careful placement, and then they're covered in adhesive tape. And we tend to always use the Scotch, the genuine Scotch tape. Oh yes, they click, don't they? Yes, he's got those in the right place. Good. And when I was uh, solely in the two-way radio business, uh, I went on a Maxon training course, and one of the radios we were dealing with for service had dome switches, so they actually covered it in the training course. So anyone who says to me, yeah, you don't cover them in Scotch tape, well, you do. Right, so we'll move forwards and we'll put some capacitors in. OK, so we've populated a few more components on this board. We've done the resistors, we've done the ceramic capacitors, we've done the electrolytic capacitors and the ceramic resonator and ceramic filter. And what we found is all the uh, 104 capacitors, instead of them being uh, that, they've been 56, instead of being 100 nanofarads, they've been 56 around there. So if I just move the camera slightly to the left you will see there's a pile of reject capacitors there and we've replaced them with monolithic dip ceramic capacitors which we have in stock but it's just been the 104s that's been out of tolerance the leftover resistors which you can also see there well they're just leftover resistors they seem to have given us too many so uh, we're going to battle on and put a few more components on this board Right, well we're a bit further on with this and we discovered that the front panel, the on and off switch, you need to cut away the kind of uh, plastic actuator because the on and off switch has an extender which goes all the way through. So you kind of have to cut that away so that it all fits together. Just to zoom out a bit so we can 
see what Mr Chip is showing you yes there we are uh, what else have we done we put all the parts in put the ribbon cable in we found that one of the lugs on the tuning capacitor is slightly wider than the other lug and so that's the way it obviously fits because we can't read the Chinese instructions and we're looking at the circuit diagram and it appears to be stereo to headphones mono to the speaker so it's going to be quite interesting and at this moment Mr Chippy is fitting the battery terminals into the case which are uh, taking some interesting tools that was him twanging the the rule oh look at that trying to get the battery contacts in without snapping the case Finished yet. no we've tested all the transistors as they went in we've uh, got quite a gaggle of our um, meters here we've got the uh, ESR and the DCA and the other one so yeah because there are some out of I say those capacitors were out of tolerance so we're just putting the batteries in I was testing the fit in the case oh right right well we'll come back to you in a moment when we've actually done a bit more okay so we've uh, we've kind of put it together and put a couple of batteries in and we've set the time and when you switch it on it's actually out for on which we find surprising and the highest it will go at the moment is 92 so it's currently tuned from 64 to 92 we're in a very poor reception area so that's going to be radio 2 and um, we haven't gone in does it do am we don't know we don't know do we I don't know if it does. The chip has an AM capability. It can't do AM because it's got no far out rod in it. No. So it's FM only. Right, that's cured that problem. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get the signal generator and then we'll just go through the alignment of the tuning capacitor, which is here. And I'll probably run through that on the, uh, on the video. Okay, so we've put this together and we've been aligning the... Uh, the preset capacitors to get the frequency coverage that we want and it's the one labeled C1-1 which is the one I'm pointing to there which is the one that sets the frequency range. So we set it up to uh, the top end of the band which is 108 using that preset so we put the variable capacitor to the top end of the band which was about 92 or something as it came as the way we put it together and then we just the capacitor to bring it to 108 and that's now brought us to 76.2 at the bottom and 108 at the top. And then this one uh, we've set for least oscillation uh, and kind of best recovered audio. And we've put the signal generator on it. I'll just zoom out there. If we can see the signal. Oh, there it is. And what we've done, we've tested it on 10.7. And we've actually set these two for best recovered audio on 10.7 I don't know what this says you're supposed to do in the instruction book but that's what we've done so having now said that if I can kind of turn it round I think we've got it on BBC Radio 1 we're a terrible reception area here we're 35 miles from any transmitter So if I tune round, we've got Classic FM on 101.1. The slow movement from So, it's, it's, nothing's going to be brilliant here. That's why we usually do AM radios, because there's nothing. Because it goes down to 70.6. That's a shadow, that shouldn't be there. So we've got radio 2 somewhere down there. Radio 3 about there. Radio 4, I hardly dare touch the volume control because I've... Yeah. 
station that's a Nottingham radio station anyway it's all aligned and it's got the sensitivity and it works as badly as any other FM radio in this area so there we are that's the we'll put it back together and uh, and just finish the video with it in one piece So there we are, Mr. Chippy's hand uh, listening to Classic FM uh, on the uh, the final finalness. And there's a few spare components and a few out of tolerance capacitors, but uh, that went together in 90 minutes. And uh, the jobs are good in, as they say. So thank you for watching. That's I don't know what model radio it is. Uh, the Chinese uh, the Chinese sheet so it says PCB one. Right, thank you for watching.